Hello again. Uh, this is a special evening for me because uh, one of our gang of four, my cousin Nasri, is here and we're trying to exp together really uh, drink some good wines that we don't have uh, the opportunity to share so much anymore. And of course, since he's coming from France, we're in the US, we said we just have to have some uh, Napa Cabernet because that's really at the end of the day, the signature American wine if you're truly a, a connoisseur. So we put together a meal that goes with that. Uh, you can guess what that is. And we said, okay, I said, I offered, uh, proposed to, to have these two bottles, basically one uh, Foreman 2007 Cabernet from Napa, as, as we have uh, reviewed together once, and one Tor uh, Candle, uh, Tor, um, sorry, Tor, uh, uh, that uh, we, uh, uh, that you know that they have made several uh, different uh, bottlings. Uh, this is one of their bottlings. They all uh, single vintage, you know, single uh, varietal, basically uh, wines. This is the Howell Mountain bottling called Cima Rosa, which means red uh, uh, summit, you know, in in Italian. It's an old name for one of the hills inside Howell Mountain. As you as we know, this is one of those sort of mythical. Uh, 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 locales in Napa Valley for their fruit, but we're going to get back to that. So uh, on the foreman, uh, this is here in this glass, and this is the the, the tour. Now the the thing is uh, on the color, you really uh, can't tell the difference. I mean, this is seventy five percent Cabernet Sauvignon, about ten fifteen percent Cabernet Franc, and then Merlot and Petit Verdot for the rest. This is one hundred percent Cabernet Sauvignon, but at the end of the day, the Cabernet Sauvignon dominates. This one has a little bit maybe more of a tint than this one, but it could be the age. I think they're very, very close. And let's look at the nose here. This one is something we're familiar with, I'm familiar with. It's a, sort of a bit of a typical uh, Bordelais assemblage with a heavy emphasis on Cabernet. So it's got the fruit, but it's got a little bit of that slight bitter after whiff that comes through and Maybe more of that uh, sort of volatile alcohol that you see in the in the in the wine, but it's very uh, it's very evocative. It's very persistent, but it's also subtle. It's got some, uh, as Nasri also de detected, some uh, whiffs of of uh, licorice, but it's really more of a of an after afterthought, so to speak. On the tour, which is very alcoholic, this is over fifteen percent. You've got, it's just fruit. It's like jam, you know, confiture, uh, really strong, just sort of like you want to eat it almost with a spoon. Uh, so what you get primarily is a red fruit, uh, kind of a red, maybe strawberry, uh, sort of sweet red fruit. Uh, uh, and then we'll, uh, and that's really, it's, sometimes we get that when you're drinking like a, one of these relic Cabernets that I really love, whatever. It's really the pure expression of Cabernet fruit in uh, Napa. With the Howard Mountain fruit, you know, with the, with the mountain uh, weather and the more concentration you get. And, and it's also a very special kind of uh, taste you're going to get. But we're going to get to that. On the palate, this is something that's been truly very nice to see evolve. We've op we opened these about, what, like 10 hours ago. So we've been slowly working our way through them. And that has continued to evolve. And now, I think towards the end of the bottle, we're getting more into some of the hard candy, maybe licorice sort of taste, uh, a little bit of the bitter chocolate, you know, bitter sweet chocolate. Very nice finish, but it's a bit more astringent, a bit more tannic, you know, on the finish. But it does stay with you. It's really there. As Nasri said, it is, it's, it's a little bit of a Bordeaux blend, but with a, with a twist. Uh, it's not Bordeaux. It's not a pure Napa Cabernet. It's a, it's a very nice combination of the two. But that tells you really that it's from Napa because it's got a little bit of that exuberance you, you often don't find uh, really in uh, in Bordeaux. Very, very nice and, and very, very discreet, very strained, but very well put together.
the tour is just an explosion of fruit and tannins. It coats the mouth. It just makes you smile and you say, wow. And it's funny because you say, wow, because of the explosion and the first impression, not necessarily because you say, oh, this is really so good, but because it makes an incredible impression. And then, but when you think about it, you say, well, I, I kind of like this. I mean, it's a little bit atypical because it's maybe too much, but this is what it's for. This is what it tries to express. And it's true to this expression that it's giving you of where the fruit came from in that vintage 2014, which is an incredibly rich and powerful vintage. So you're getting that right here, right now, and you have to really enjoy it for what it is. So they're both very different. It's very hard to choose between the two and say I like this or that. And I try never to do that because they each have a place. But I just think that they're, they're both extraordinary in terms of what, uh, without being extreme in terms of price, without being showy, without being, you know, just crazy rare. They're both really, really nice bottles of uh, Napa Cabernet. Cheers.